Although many Western thinkers often associate religions with deities or supernatural entities, Confucianism is one religious tradition that does not have any gods. Despite its focus on building strong character and acting correctly in all situations, its followers do not follow divine teachings, nor have they turned Confucius into a god. Instead, his modern-day followers worship him as a spirit, taking his teachings as an ethical guide to living well in society. Despite the lack of deities or supernatural mythology, Confucianism rapidly spread across China, Japan, and the rest of Asia, impacting the continent's development from ancient times into the modern day. Today, Confucianism is regarded as one of the many vital influences on China's legacy. Originating during the Zhou Dynasty, Confucianism has impacted Chinese history as the philosophy became an integral part of politics and culture. With its focus on unselfishness and respect for authority, Confucianism was popular with ordinary people, but it did not become popular with the ruling class until about 200 years after Confucius's death. Since then, it has become one of the prominent philosophies in China, impacting the world as the country becomes increasingly focused on global endeavors. How did Confucianism become so important to Chinese culture? Its impact has affected the development of China's identity, giving it some of its richness, so it is time to take a deeper look at Confucianism. By looking into the tenets of its philosophy and history, we will be able to glimpse how it has changed China's history and continues to impact the world today with its focus on virtue and authority. What is Confucianism? Confucius was born in 551 BCE and died in 479 BCE. Yet the founder of Confucianism had a challenging life. His family has historically been part of the government, but by the time he was born, they had fallen in power and wealth, leaving Confucius unable to enter national government service and forcing him to take up smaller assignments with neighboring clans. While he was skillful at handling law and order, his true talents lay in diplomacy. However, he only served as a diplomat for the Jisun clan for a few years before he was forced to resign and go into self-exile after a major crisis between the Jisun clan and the rightful rulers of the region of Lu. For 14 years, Confucius wandered through various Chinese states, ending up in Chen and Kai before returning home. Although he was looking for a ruler willing to accept his wisdom and influence, he also began thinking about making the world right. While that may seem lofty to some today, at the time, people of low social standing, like Confucius, could still change their world by gaining a ruler's ear. Through influence, they would push for ideals like nobleness and integrity which could impact the nation's development. Sadly, Confucius could not convince any ruler to accept his guidance or ideals of a virtuous government for long. Not having a steady job distressed him, leaving him without financial stability and feeling as though he was not properly using his skills to better the world. Despite his travels and anxieties, Confucius did acquire disciples, many of whom came from various walks of life, ranging from nobility to criminals. They were primarily young men looking to gain skills for official careers, but they also received training in gentlemanly behavior, morality, and political astuteness. After 14 unsuccessful years, Confucius finally returned home to Lu. By this time, he was old enough for the state's rulers and advisors to come to him for advice as an elder. Confucius continued to teach others about virtue and attempted to guide his students to the right way of living. Many of his teachings became part of Confucianism, which outlived its founder and reached levels of influence Confucius could only have dreamed of. In essence, Confucianism teaches people to respect the proper authorities, to exercise obedience, and to take their sense of integrity from within themselves. According to Confucius, every critical relationship had to have a hierarchy, even friendships. So many of the tenets of Confucianism deal with how to show kindness to people lower than you and how to show respect to people with authority over you. Thus, respecting authority was not only concerned with respecting the emperor, but also with respecting spouses, parents, and friends. The most critical part of this philosophy is Ren, which best translates as kindness or virtue. Confucius focused on turning his disciples into proper gentlemen who acted in the best interests of others at all times. Today, that focus continues to be a significant driving force behind the philosophy encouraging everyone to act respectfully and with attention to others within the confines of one's social standing. 
Even though these ideas would go on to shape Chinese culture, they did not have a significant impact during Confucius' life. His philosophy would have to wait until the Han Dynasty to truly carve out its legacy. How did Confucianism become popular in China? Although Confucianism was popular with the common people, it did not become popular with the nobility until much later. One of the people who helped spread Confucianism and repackage it so that the nobility could see the philosophy's use in government was Mencius. He lived from 372 BCE to 289 BCE and is traditionally considered the second sage behind Confucius. Mencius helped make Confucianism applicable to feudal lords and other rulers by emphasizing how creating scholar officials would benefit the government in the long run, even if those people were not directly involved in agriculture or trade. After debunking the philosophies of collectivism and individualism, Mencius moved his ideas into the realm of prophets. He maintained that the people of the state were the most important, not the king. If the king did not rule properly, the people had the right to overthrow that ruler and set up a new one. You may be familiar with the idea that the governing power rests with the people from the Enlightenment, an era of revolutionary thought and political discord in Western culture in the 1700s. But this idea is actually much older than the Enlightenment. Mencius had other ideas that may surprise you. He also argued the best way for feudal lords to protect their power and wealth was to build relationships with their officers, ministers, and the general public. This practice would create a bond between the ruler and the public, allowing the ruler to treat his people kindly and the people to treat their ruler with respect. He believed people in general needed to feel connected to others, so connecting people with the government would strengthen a ruler's power while also fulfilling the population's needs. While Mencius shaped Confucianism to fit the political world better, one of his rivals strongly disagreed that people were inherently good. Instead, Jun Zi believed people were intrinsically evil and more focused on self-gratification than virtue or self-improvement. Jun Zi thought people needed unmistakable authority and social constraints, which the Chinese governments at the time latched onto. In fact, the Qin dynasty took an even more extreme stance by taking up the legalist philosophy in an authoritarian regime. The Qin dynasty only lasted a few years before it toppled under political and military pressures. Around 206 BCE, the Han dynasty began, and its earliest leaders saw great value in Confucianism. They could use it to maintain their power and lead the growing Chinese nation. Using Confucian philosophies to shape Han politics was a slow process, but leaders like Emperor Gao Zhu found the emphasis on moral leadership was essential to making a politically stable nation. He appointed people like Cao Shen, who had fought alongside him to establish the Han dynasty. Cao Shen also valued Confucian ideals, so he helped the emperor select administrators with reference to their honesty, obedience to authorities like the emperor, and competence at various jobs. Emperor Gao Zhu's governmental reforms, including tax breaks for the peasants, set the Han dynasty up to enjoy the golden age of ancient China. By the time Emperor Wu Di came to the throne in 141 BCE, Confucianism was deeply entrenched in Chinese political practices. The government and court system had been separated, the legal system increasingly focused on shaping and enforcing acceptable behaviors. Despite all of the changes throughout the Han Dynasty, Emperor Wu Di was the first Chinese emperor to announce Confucianism was a state cult and imperially recognized ideology. Confucianism had officially become part of China's lasting legacy. What were the impacts of Confucianism? Confucius intended to teach his disciples how to live moral lives and be true gentlemen. Eventually, his emphasis on respect for elders and authority figures influenced the very structure of Chinese society, especially once the Han Dynasty made Confucianism an imperial ideology. However, Confucianism continued to play a significant role in Chinese politics and culture long after the Han Dynasty ended. Many emperors drew on Confucianism to set up administrative hierarchies and to secure their own power. The legal code used this philosophy to combine the civil and criminal codes. According to Confucius, there is a connection between morality and business, so the laws began to regulate many aspects of life, including marriage, religious rights, and even construction. The connection between Confucianism and the Chinese law code is more transparent in the Great Qing Legal Code, but the idea that people need rules to know how to live remains highly influential. 
Of course, the emperors were not the only people to use Confucianism to further their own cause. Various rebellions and political groups claimed to follow Confucianism over the years, even when they rebelled against the emperors. One example is the White Lotus Rebellion of 1794, which promised eternal salvation to those who joined their cause. Although it started as a localized rebellion over taxes, it soon grew large enough to weaken the Qing dynasty, from which it never recovered. The emperors who fought against the rebellion had to discount the philosophical attachments and dismantle the actual rebellion. They were able to do so successfully after about 10 years of fighting. Today, the Chinese Communist Party continues to use Confucian ideologies to lead the nation, securing their right to rule and impacting China's foreign policies. It has pushed China to pursue modernization and encourage people to continue to follow the traditional government, especially the government's right to rule. In Chinese culture, family ties and honoring elders and ancestors continue to be a critical part of society. These values can be traced back to Confucianism. It has also led to a continued emphasis on education, which was one of Confucius's ruling passions, as well as a focus on self-improvement. Overall, Confucianism has left an unmistakable impact on Chinese culture and its legacy. The traditional focus on ancestor worship, respect for authority figures, and focus on the group instead of the individual are critical parts of modern Chinese culture. These ideas can be traced back to Confucius and his attempts to teach people how to live appropriately in a world that was often chaotic and in which Confucius felt he was not working to his potential. However, Confucius's legacy has reached far beyond his small area of China. The nation has become a global superpower, and Confucianism has since spread around the globe. Today, there are about 6.1 million followers of Confucianism worldwide, and the ideas of this philosophy have permeated global culture. As China continues to extend its influence and work with other international leaders, its culture and legacy will continue to spread making sure Confucius did not give his work in vain. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Chinese history, check out our book, History of China, a captivating guide to Chinese history, including events such as the first emperor of China, the Mongol conquests of Genghis Khan, the Opium Wars, and the Cultural Revolution. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.